Hey guys, Connor from Futures Analytica here. Thank you for your patience in waiting for this video, which will be a little bit different from my other videos in structure. This is a trade recap and analysis for all of my trading days lasting a single week in one video, including the days that are pretty boring or low volume. I'm actually using almost identical settings to my last video. Although I could have tweaked them a bit more to try and get further inside that edge envelope, I want to show you guys that you don't actually need to continuously tweak your settings to be successful trading this. But if you're more advanced and have a good grasp on the concepts, you are more than welcome to increase your edge by doing so. We're starting out Monday by arming in both directions at open. You may have noticed a new indicator on the chart. This is a reverse strength indicator, which can help show you when you might want to avoid taking trades in that direction, or can help you on deciding on when you should arm in the opposite direction. I also want to show you guys how you can successfully trade in hybrid with the auto arm feature rather than completely relying on it. So right there, because we had it armed in both directions at open and a triple stacked imbalance formed, we got opened into the long direction. So from here on out, until we get close to the upper strength indicator area, we will only be arming long. If any new viewers are curious about the interface on the right, it is the Polarity Automated Trading Interface, which is an automated trading system meant to assist you as much as possible in getting the perfect entry when trading order flow and balances. It has a lightning quick trade execution speed and will enter you into a trade immediately after detecting a stacked imbalance. We do get filled there, however, our mistake is that we probably should not have continuously armed long after this, at least immediately. We probably should have expected at least a little bit of a pullback before we armed long again because of how close it is to that green line with that new indicator that we're using. But alas, we made that mistake and obviously I'm not going to cut that out. It's a pretty good example of how you can use the new indicator and the new auto arm resistance and support lines in conjunction with each other to keep themselves in check. It's not, probably not a good idea to always have auto arm on. I personally don't use it like that, and this is a good example why. Obviously, if you haven't noticed already, um, a lot of this stuff is sped up to keep this video under an hour. We get filled into this trade right at that green line, and we get stopped out pretty quickly. Um, after this happens, we decide to flip on the auto arm button to try and predict this being a mini pullback ending with a delta pump. So when we do this, we end up getting filled into a long trade pretty quickly after we do that. As I've stated before, the best way to use the Polarity ATI's auto arm feature is in conjunction with your normal trading behavior. When you see a potential breakout from the marked line, you can flip it on and it'll execute the trade as perfect as possible with as little slippage as possible. You're able to concentrate on other things and this also makes it easier to trade more than one instrument at the same time. The whole logic behind our auto arm uh, strategy today is that we're either going to wait for some negative delta paired with a large distance above the green reverse strength indicator or a trade loss, where in either condition we will disarm the strategy and wait for a more clear area to arm. As you can see here, we are in our second trade. We won the first one, and then we do end up getting filled on the second one. This leads us to automatically be re-entered into that new trade. Right here, as you can see at the bottom, although we're in this trade, Delta has flipped negative, so we decide to flip off auto arm. Although we do get filled, we're gonna wanna always be watching the Delta in terms of looking for our next entry. So in order to stay safe as possible, we flip it off on that previous bar. Pretty much right after we see those two red bars in a row along with some negative delta with a divergence on this one where delta was really really high but price was moving downward we decided to arm it in the short direction we're also above that strength line meaning we have a pretty good chance at catching a pullback here so we're going to arm only in the short direction for now
there was a little bit of a fight from the aggressive buyers to keep price high, where the bars were sort of following the strain there for a little, but then this triple stacked imbalance enters us into a short position. So here we have gotten all we want from this one pullback move, even though there might be a little bit more of a downward movement. The best virtue to have when trading this strategy is to not be greedy looking to capitalize on the entire length of a potential move. It is totally fine to get your 15 or so ever ticks and to be okay with it. The market isn't going anywhere and there's going to be plenty of more moves in the future. So a good amount of time has passed since our last trade, and we could have continued to arm short there and gotten a profitable fill. But because we were okay with waiting for a more comfortable opportunity, we held off on that arm short. Right here, price is starting to bounce off of this green reverse strength line. So naturally, we're going to arm short looking for that pullback. It's all about balancing using the auto arm feature and looking for pullbacks that occur within this very wide and generous range. The times you'll want to avoid are when price is following a strength line or the range is very small with a low price delta correlation. And right here, we get filled into that pullback trade. We're going to be monitoring the trade, but we're not really going to be looking for an early exit as we simply don't have a ton of data when we're inside of the trade to make a decision on such a small time frame. The trade does end up taking quite a while to fill. However, price remains below the reverse strength indicator as well as below our stop loss. For our stop loss, it's ideal if it is above that reverse strength indicator so we have that little extra cushion to go off of. So we got filled there pretty nice. But as we're so close to the middle of the two reverse strength lines, we are again not going to double dip into another short trade. And right here, once again, price is closing onto this blue reverse strength line along with a weakening delta. So we're going to arm it in the long direction. And shortly after, the system detects that stacked imbalance and enters into that long trade. Because this is a non-runner strategy and we've already up a great amount for the day, we're not going to be looking for early exits. However, we have added a close button onto the Plarity ATI, which is our newly added workaround for those of you who wish to manage trades they are currently in without the strategy disabling itself, which unfortunately is standard in IntraTrader protocol when dealing with manual exits and entries when using automated strategies. So even with that suppressed delta, we actually end up getting filled and we especially want to avoid arming in the long direction after seeing that 50 delta bar right before this one. And right here, we're not super close to that blue strength indicator, but you can see price is now bouncing off of that red support line that was formed automatically by the Polarity ATI, giving us the green light for arming in the long direction. However, even though we have the strategy armed for quite some time, price moved its way upward without there being any stacked imbalances. So unfortunately, we don't capture any alpha there and we decide to call it at a cool $4,300 in post-commission profit which brings our weekly total to be $4,359 in profit. Unfortunately, total PL resets every day, so I cannot show you guys a continuous PL at the top left-hand corner, but I will be tracking it for you guys at the bottom left-hand side of the current screen. Don't blame me, um, it's NinjaTrader and pretty much every brokerage, they're gonna reset your PL every day. Okay, heading right into Tuesday, we're still on ES with the exact same settings as yesterday. At market open, we're right above that reverse strength line on the bottom there, so we're going to arm only in the long direction. We're also going to be marking that previous resistance line formed by the Polarity ATI with the Y-axis range tool so we can track it better. Scrolling back into pre-market, you can see that price was consistently bouncing off of those reverse strength lines, so we did know that that was going to be a really good entry on open. I don't recommend only using these strength lines to trade. I highly recommend integrating order flow with it like I'm doing here, 
but the download for it is free in the description so if you guys are interested. We get filled there for a really great $700 profit right out of the gate, which is always great to see. Just like before, since it's a pullback trade, we're not gonna rearm in the long direction. About 30 minutes have passed now where price has consistently stayed nowhere near those lines where it's been super choppy with a bunch of adjacent bars with a very low correlation between delta and price. So we avoided trading during those 30 minutes. However, price here is now getting closer and closer to that line. So we're gonna wanna arm again in the long direction to try and pick up a long trade if there's an imbalance or stacked imbalance that occurs. And that is exactly what happens. A stacked imbalance occurs and we quickly get into a long trade with a pretty good fill. After this, all we have to do is wait and see for what the next move is. We're probably not gonna be rearming immediately. We get filled right there, and since this is a pullback trade, we're not gonna be rearming again. About 30 minutes passed by with price just sticking to the center of the strength range here, so we haven't had any opportunities since that last long trade. But price is approaching this blue reverse strength line, so we're gonna arm it in the long direction. After almost 10 minutes of waiting with it armed long, we finally get filled into a trade. So here we have it armed long because of that delta divergence, both at 736 as well as 747. However, the best move here is to switch to auto arm as we need a secondary confirmation as we usually don't take more than one trade when looking for pullbacks. So after some initial chop near the middle of the bar, after we turned auto arm on, price moves its way above that green auto marked resistance line and the strategy is armed and automatically picks up that stack imbalance. We get filled super quickly here with no change in the delta price action we're looking for. So we have the momentum necessary to continue having auto arm enabled as we push through this reverse strength line. As it passes through that zone, we get a triple stack imbalance, which leads us to get entered long into that new position. There is a fill on that position right when another stacked imbalance forms, which has us pushed into another long trade. However, this time we get stopped out. We're loving that really strong surge in Delta in the thousands bar over bar. So we're gonna continue to try and take advantage of this move, which is why we leave auto army on here. So since the system is only armed in the long direction, when that stacked imbalance appears on this bar, we get automatically entered. We almost get stopped out, which probably would have led us to call it for the day, but it pulls through and leaves us with a really nice fill. Delta is still great, so we're leaving our auto arm enabled, looking for that extra trade. We get that nice target fill there, pushing us right into another trade on the stack that caused us to get filled in the first place. Very straightforward trade there. However, when that cycle repeats once more, we are not so fortunate. 
We end up getting stopped out here where we probably would have been best off by letting this move complete before looking for another entry. But we're a bit cocky right now and we try to get another extra trade in which, you guessed it, leads us to be stopped out again. We probably shouldn't have, but we do leave auto arm on here until price dips down far enough. I do not recommend doing that as I did here. As I said in prior videos, I do have bad trading habits still, and I really hate showing those to you guys, especially when I end up winning those as it's reinforcing bad behavior. But I'm not gonna hide them from you. Just be warned that this is probably not an optimal trading decision. But I just couldn't help myself. When I saw price dip back in and out of that reverse strength zone, as well as a new resistance line being formed with those stacked imbalances poking right out of it, I really couldn't look away from such a nice semi-auto entry with that arm button. So we do get filled into that trade. Really stellar and straightforward trade. We're going to continue to arm it in the long direction for just one more opportunity. Those aggressive buyers are just relentless in pushing this up, and I really think we can squeeze out another 15 ticks. I'm a little bit superstitious though, and maybe I just like patterns. And the last time we looked for more than two trades on this bullish move, we had a small correction and then ended up losing both two trades after that. So we're going to wait a little bit longer after that and see what happens. What's great about auto arm is even if we had left it on there, we would have not been entered into a long trade. But wow, I cannot ignore that massive delta of divergence at 1126 where there were 919 more active buyers than sellers, but price was still pushed down. Along with that extra confirmation of delta and price switching negative, we are going to arm short here. I do end up missing out on a bunch of potential profit here in the short direction because our settings are a bit too insensitive to catch that move but with patience, we do get filled into a short trade there, which ends up filling for a nice extra 15 ticks of profit. So with that trade done, it's only about an hour away from market close and our final daily profit was just pushed right above $5,000 after commissions. I think I'd really be pushing it to continue trading after that massive move with that much profit secured, especially with how bold I was today. Tuesday's profits bring our total weekly gain so far to a total of $9,407.28. All right, heading straight into Wednesday on the exact same settings as Tuesday and Monday, once again on ES. We haven't even taken a single look at the VIX, so we're trying to trade without any kind of external analysis using these settings. So back to trading. We armed in both directions at market open as opposed to just arming long. We did this because in pre-market, price wasn't really bouncing super clearly off those reverse strength lines, and there was a ton of adjacent bars right before market open. Not that it really mattered because we did get a long fill anyway, so it would have been the same if we had just armed in the long direction. After we have our initial trade entry, this is the perfect time to turn on auto arm. This will make sure that we get the best initial fill if we get filled onto this trade. Really straightforward trade there, and because we got filled and we're above that green line, auto arm has pretty much triggered and our arming on the long is active. Just like in our previous videos, once we get that first initial trade, we're going to continuously leave auto arm on. And but since we now have that new indicator, we're gonna add on the condition that um, once price leaves that green area, um, we're not gonna leave auto arm on anymore. takes a bit of time, but we do automatically get bought into that trade, which has us take profit above the green reverse strength line. We're being a bit risky here, but if it plays out correctly, we'll be able to arm short, and if enough order flow imbalances happen above that green line, we could potentially catch a pullback right out of the box. I recommend if you're ever going to take trades like this, you utilize the new close button to possibly exit the trade early if price starts to move against you, 
You can also potentially move your stop loss to your entry or a lower profit target if you want to automatically protect against that. However, as we didn't have any trouble getting filled, we didn't ever have to manually intervene with that trade. Always be sure that if you're taking a trade that is considered out of bounds to be ready to exit early at all times. Going with our original plan, we try to catch a short trade outside of the envelope. However, no short stacked imbalances appear. So unfortunately, we miss out on this entire pullback as the strategy detected no stacked imbalances. So about 15 minutes have passed since we had our last interaction with the chart, but we've, we're seeing something pretty interesting happen here. So there's now a polarity formed resistance line right where the reverse strength line is, meaning if we even poke out of that level, we're going to want to arm short. Combine that with the fact that since there was a decent divergence at 703, we've got a pretty high probability arming condition in the short direction. And right there is the triple stacked imbalance that moves us outside of the envelope. We're definitely not going to be trading in that direction. Looking for the pullback, we arm it in the short direction here. Takes a bit of time, but we end up getting our entry that we were looking for. Really healthy trade, super far from that red support level marked by polarity, and a good entry close to that reverse strength level. Definitely a textbook pullback trade. Super quick with almost no opposing participants. Since it's only been 30 minutes since market open and we've won all three, three of our trades, as well as there being a really weird channel forming above the strength uh, reverse strength envelope, we decided to call it for the day, which brings our total weekly profit all the way up to $11,600. All right, you guys, let's get right into Thursday. So here we've actually moved over to ZN for the day as I have a very early morning commitment. We're basically going to trade the first imbalance we see and then walk away from the computer essentially. I've had pretty good success using this, but it definitely can be a bit frustrating if you get lost streaks as there's only one trade opportunity per day with it as we're only trading that opening breakout. So we have to change up the settings obviously when going to ZN as it is a very different instrument than, than ES. So the settings are in fact in the description if you're interested in trading ZN. The details on how to use this is pretty simple. At open, we arm in both directions and don't interfere unless we want to move our stop loss. That's pretty much the whole thing. After I entered, I uh, walked away from my computer and just let the ATM strategy do its thing. Yep, that's the whole trading day. A little bit wonky, but with a one to three risk reward ratio, it's a great way to get a trade in, even when you have other commitments that day, as long as you're not using terrible settings. It was not a bad feeling to make $900 by essentially clicking one button. So with Thursday wrapped up, we are now at $12,500 gain for the week. All right, you guys, moving on to Friday. We've got this really nice pop up here on market open where price is gently sitting at the green envelope line. So this would obviously mean that we are going to arm short at open as it is already at the place where we want to look for a retracement. Unfortunately, we get stopped out pretty quickly on this trade. But we're really, really looking for this short trade here. We didn't get stomped out because of a breakout. We just had a pretty bad entry in terms of where our execution happened. There was no breakout, so we're still going to be looking for another short trade. And then here's our second entry. But we got a really bad fill. Our execution is nowhere near the top of the envelope and we get whipped out again. Delta is perfect still. Tons of sell pressure, even with low price movement. And I would not have forgiven myself if I stopped trading there. So we keep our arm short on, really looking for the sell move.
And there is our third execution with another poor entry. Fortunately, we do get filled on this one. And honestly, I'm getting a bit emotional here. I'm really chasing this trade, very sloppy on my part. And I'm really not following my rules by doing this. Delta technically is all right, but we should not be looking for a double trade here on a pullback. I guess it works out in our favor, but I will probably pay for that later if I do that again. So right away after this, because price has now immediately met our blue reverse resistance line, we're pretty obligated to arm in the long direction. And finally, there is that long entry we've been looking for, but it's a bit of a death sentence here. You really want to avoid trading these retracements when price starts to follow either one of these lines, which is exactly what is happening here. So we manually close the trade and call it for the week. This leads us to end the day with a $381 loss, bringing our weekly gain to a pretty solid $12,150.